Hello, 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 welcome back to Hunter Tune. Today I'm gonna show you this $500 Honda Del Sol that I picked up, and I've just been enjoying it. It's been great, but I didn't buy it running and driving like this. Stay tuned and find out uh, what we got here and uh, what I had to do to fix it. Side note, uh, if anybody's interested, I am gonna run another holiday sale until the end of the year. Uh, I've had a lot of people asking about the Black Friday sale and stuff like that, and I figured, to show my appreciation to you guys, I'm gonna offer another 10% sale all the way until January 1st. So if you guys are interested on huntertune.com, you can go pick up a fuel rail, a set of injectors, a wastegate, a blow-off valve, a turbo, anything on my website, 10% off. Me and Christine have been absolutely trucking, getting everybody's orders out, and we can't thank you all enough. But uh, enjoy the video of my $500 Honda Del Sol. So this is the listing, it says parts for 94 Del Sol SI, D16 Z6, engine does not run, ask away before it gets junked on Monday, or buy the whole car. And these were the pictures on the ad, uh, not very good pictures, but I saw it had a Z6 in it, and the front of it looked pretty clean, so I figure worst case scenario, uh, it should have a P28 ECU which nowadays guys is going, you know, a virgin one is like 200 bucks. So there's 200 bucks off the price. The Z6, if it's good, probably another two to 300 bucks easy any day of the week. Uh, the trans is another two to 300 bucks. And then the car itself, the wheels, everything like that. So I figured, well, worst case scenario, um, if the engine's completely screwed or whatever, I will, uh, you know, part it out or whatever and make a couple bucks. So that's kind of why I bought it and the messages here, I'll show you uh, because I asked, I said how much for the whole car and he told me 550 bucks. There we go, I just deleted the text where it was his address. Uh, so I just said, is it available? Price for the whole car. I have trailer and can come by. I didn't even ask questions. He said 550 bucks. I said, do you have a title? He said, clean title. I said, okay, what's the address? He gave me the address and uh, I showed up. So when I got there, I saw the car and it was a little bit rougher than I thought. And I'm gonna show you guys that here in a second. Uh, but we got it home and I'm gonna get it pushed into the garage right now. All right, guys, so uh, here is the $500 Honda Del Sol. Let's uh, check it out, starting at the good, the front. <laughs> uh, looks like a corner light busted out there, uh, but the bumper, for the most part here, no cracks in the bumper, nothing like that. Uh, it's a complete bumper, straight, uh, so that's cool. The uh, hood, other than a little bit of clear coat fade, Really good condition. Yeah, it's just dirty. So uh, yeah, hood, bumper, even the front fenders, all in really good shape. All the tires hold air, so that's a plus. Um, this fender is also uh, really good shape, other than uh, clear coat fe uh, peeling. So uh, that's pretty cool. Car has some hood risers, it looks like. And uh, it's also got a cracked windshield. So it is cracked pretty bad. So that's something that I'll have to uh, address if I end up keeping this thing. So door, also really good condition. But back here, it's rusted. So it's kind of funny how the rust completely stops at the door. The door is completely perfect. Like there's no rust even in this corner down here. Like it's spotless on the door. But then we get down to like, you know, 
the fender or the rear fender into the rocker panel in here, it's uh, rusted. And it's that way on both sides. But uh, we got some clean Del Sol seats, so that's cool. Looks like we got some uh, tree branches and stuff that fell on in here. I don't know what this uh, witchcraft is. <laughs> Just kidding. Looks like the top might have leaked at one point and they tried to seal it up right here. But uh, not too bad. Not too bad. The interior, also pretty clean. Driver's seat's a little screwed up. Passenger seat's really clean. Um, but the dash is clean. There's no cracks in the dash or nothing. Climate control all looks really good. I don't even know if it has a radio in it. Oh shit. We got that dual Walmart special. I should probably shut the key off. So uh, yeah, moving farther back on the thing, we got some uh, JDM tail lights. I don't, I'm, I don't know if you guys are a fan of these. I'm not the biggest fan of it. Uh, we got a Gretti burnt tip muffler. So that's pretty sweet. I haven't even opened the trunk yet on this car. Uh, it looks like it was smucked over here a little bit. Uh, and that's probably why they put taillights in it. It probably got smucked on this corner, busted the taillight. They put new taillights in it and just didn't fix the body damage, which whatever. It's an old car, who cares? And this side, also rotted. <laughs> but the funny thing is, is where the rust is, is the only spot there's rust on the car. Underneath, and uh, I wish I could put it on the hoist. I'm not at the shop right now because the car doesn't run. I just brought it home quick to see if I get it running. Um, the rust completely stops at the body. Um, I actually have a four-door sedan that I bought recently where the body is completely clean, but underneath is rotted. The trail where the trailing arm goes into the frame, everything like that, or into the body, whatever, uh, into the structural part of the car, completely rotted. This thing is completely opposite, and my hatch is also the same way where the body is rusted, but the underneath is really clean. So it's always a mystery of how they rust, why they rust, and where they rust. Uh, but uh, this car is a factory disc brake car. And you can just look in the wheel well here, guys. Like, it's really clean. You know, suspension-wise, everything like that. Like, I wouldn't even be scared to uh, take the lower control arm bolts out of this car. And that's saying something for a Honda. Like, even those tow link bolts way up there don't even scare me. The trunk floor, really clean. Um, yeah, so pretty cool. I wouldn't be scared to... Uh, I wouldn't be scared to actually drive this one around, so that's cool. Uh... I'm just gonna show you underneath where the rust is here. <laughs> the lift point is perfectly fine. <laughs> I don't get it. But it's completely rotted all through the body here. So, like I said, it's funny how they rust and you know, it's a, it, you know, whatever. They're all a little different. They all have a little different story of where the salt's at. Let's pop the hood. Check this thing out, uh, what it's got underneath the hood. I didn't really look at this car a whole lot. It was dark out. I just gave the kid 500 bucks and I left. <laughs> All right, so it looks like we got a cold air intake. We got a uh, never start from O'Reilly's. Brand new this year, so a good battery in this thing. We got an aluminum radiator. And uh, yeah, he said it uh, just quit on him one day and uh, he was it was stuck on the side of the road. <laughs> so uh, I turned the key on in the car and I noticed that the uh, check engine light goes on and off uh, so in the fuel pump primes the main relay clicks I don't think we have any wiring issues and I don't think it's like a fuel pump or anything like that I think it's something with the motor and uh, I actually popped a hood when I was there and I don't know if you guys can see anything wrong leave it down in the comments what's wrong If you guessed timing belt, you're right. So the timing belt looks like it was chewing away at this cover here. So I don't know if the belt broke or if something just started riding, you know, off of a pulley or something like that. Um, 
I'm gonna take off this top cover here and I'm gonna see if we can uh, see if the belt is broken or what's the deal. Also, this power steering line is just kind of sitting here. I'm gonna tie this off, off up there so it's out of our way. I might move the cruise control so it's out of our way. A couple 10 mil bolts, move this up and out of the way. And then we can easily get at that upper cover there to pull it off. Now to get the uh, timing belt cover off normally, you gotta pop the valve cover to uh, get this little ridge out of here, but I'm just gonna pop it off and probably break it out of there because this cover's junk anyway. Well, I can tell you right now the belt is extremely loose. So this is with the cover off. Um, it appears that somebody tried to put a timing belt kit in it or a tensioner or something like that because the tensioner bolt way down there is uh, brand new. I don't know if you guys can even see the tensioner bolt, but uh, it's brand new. You'll have to take my word for it. And uh, looks like the belt was just walking its way off. So I'm gonna continue inspecting here and I'm gonna see if uh, maybe I'll get the crank pulley off or something. And then uh, <clears throat> once the crank pulley is off of it, I'll be able to uh, take the lower cover off and really get an understanding of what's going on with this timing belt. And I'm just gonna take an educated guess of, that's why it's not running. And uh, these little single cams, most of the time, they're not really an interference motor. You can get away with a slightly bent valve. It's okay. But, uh, side note, I don't think I've ever crashed valves on almost any Honda motor, unless it was really high compression. Uh, but a stock single cam, I think we're gonna be okay. All right guys, so I got the wheel pulled off. I got the uh, little shroud here out of the way. I'm gonna pull the crank pulley bolt. Try to get that lower cover off and uh, we'll see what we can find. All right, so uh, the tensioner for the timing belt is loose. Um, it's not, uh, the bolt's not tight. I'm hoping that the block isn't stripped out for the tensioner, because it is a really common thing. Uh, so I'm gonna remove the tensioner now. I'm gonna check the threads inside the block and see how bad this thing's, good. see how bad it really is. Come on. Yeah, it kind of feels sketchy. Well, unfortunately, the threads in the block are screwed up. Um, I don't know if they ran the wrong bolt in there or what happened or somebody over tightened it in the past. Uh, but like I said, it's common, especially guys that are learning. Uh, putting timing belts in these things, those bolts on the, that hold the tensioner on. It's all wallowed out here too on the top side, it's all wallowed. So yeah, this was just super loose because the bolt is stripped out. And uh, yeah, so this is the bolt they were using. And uh, I cleaned a lot of metal out of the threads already, but uh, I don't know if this bolt was cut or something. You can see it's not really like straight, a starting point there, so. Um, and it looks like it's probably too long of a bolt so they might have ran this bolt all the way in until it stopped and then it just rattled its way out. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a skeptical here. Uh, but I'm going to go get the right bolt and uh, we'll see if those threads are savable. Uh, I'm going to see if I can just maybe run a tap through there and uh, clean the threads, tap it out, put the correct bolt in and uh, we'll go from there I suppose. But everything else was there. They had the washers on the lower gear. Um, everything else seems fine i hope <laughs> so yeah i'm gonna run to the shop and see if i got a tensioner bolt and a tap and then uh i'll we'll pick up with you guys when i get back all right guys so i just got back from the shop a little while ago i grabbed a stock honda bolt for a z6 
I actually have a Z6 motor at the shop. I pulled the uh, tensioner bolt out of it. <clears throat> and uh, this thread, she gone. The, inside the block, I tried putting the stock bolt back in and uh, there's no threads to catch. Like it's just screwed. <laughs> so what I did is I took a drill and I put an M12 tap on it, which is bigger thread. And I lowered the engine down, took the motor mount off on this side, lowered the motor down, and I snuck my tap in through here. I slammed a couple threads in there, and I grabbed a bolt, a bigger bolt, and I drilled the tensioner hole bigger, and I threw it all back together. And now we have a belt that is tight on both sides. <clears throat> uh, I tensioned it with, uh, where's my little hook tool? Right here. So this little hook tool, I'm not using the spring. The spring is meant to like set your tension. I set it manually with this little hook tool. So I hook it in there, pull up as I tighten down the bolt. And now the tensioner is tight, the belt's tight, and it's in time. So. I'm going to put the motor mount back on, throw the crank pulley back on, alternator belt, all the lower cover and stuff like that. And uh, we're going to see if this thing fires up, guys. Uh, I don't know. I was turning the motor over by hand uh, on the bottom side. And it did sound like something clacked in the head. I don't know if I was just, you know, paranoid. But <laughs> I feel like if it's going to crash a valve, it probably already happened. It didn't happen from what I'm trying to do here. So I'm also going to tighten this valve cover ground up. This guy was loose. Get that tightened down. Throw all this back together and I'll let you guys know if she runs. What do you think? $500 Honda Del Sol. I think it's going to fire up after this broken timing garbage. It's fixed. The bolt is tight. I, I mean, I cranked on that fucker. It's a 19 mil head. And I cranked on it pretty hard. So I'm hoping it's going to hold. But I'll probably just run it for a couple days if it runs. Which I'm thinking it's going to. Uh, I'll run it for a couple days. Maybe take it to the shop and back a couple times. Make sure that thing is going to stay good. I'm probably actually going to leave the lower time encumber off for now because I want to keep an eye on everything. Uh, but I'm going to get it back together. I'm curious if this thing's going to start. All right, guys, I got it all back together. See if she runs. Come on, baby. nothing running smooth hell yeah look at that timing belt nice and tight sounds like we got a little exhaust leak at the header just means we got to put a turbo kit on it I guess What interference motor? Hell yeah, guys. That is awesome. Yeah, it sounds like there's a header leak right in here somewhere. You can tell she hasn't ran in a while. Probably gotta put some heat in it. Let's see if the lights and shit work.
$500 beater. That's awesome. Yeah, it sounds like the motor might be ticking, but I'm almost positive it's just the exhaust leak. This puppy's got some miles on her. 366,000. Got almost a half a tank of gas. There's 30 bucks right there. Hell yeah. Let's fire it up one more time. Look at that shit. <laughs> See, this is the shit that I really kind of enjoy. Getting old piece of shit Hondas that somebody gave up on new life. I enjoy it. I don't know why, but uh, I can't wait to go uh, rip the rev limiter in this thing. <laughs> Just go beat the shit out of it because I don't care. Because it was 500 bucks, you know? But the trans feels real good. I might have to put it on E85 though. I hate pump gas. It's disgusting. Gross. Well guys, that is it for my $500 Honda Del Sol. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We got it running. Same day I started working on it. I uh, got it yesterday. I didn't pull it into the garage till like three hours ago. And uh... Fixed the threads in the block that were stripped out for the tensioner. And uh, we got ourselves a good running little single cam D16Z6 Honda Del Sol. Uh, I had a good feeling about this one. I kind of just figured the guy was down on his luck and, uh, you know, didn't want to continue with the project. Got frustrated and it was going to go to the junkyard. So we saved one uh, from literally being crushed. So... This one will live another day, maybe ice racing or just hooning around, you know, beating on it, whatever. Have some fun with it. I don't know. Leave it down in the comments what you guys think. I kind of want to put a top mount on one of these little single cams. Do uh, you think we could make like 300 horsepower on a stock D16Z6 with really good tuning? Maybe. We could try it. I know uh, Christine actually had a Del Sol right when we first uh, first got together. I got her a Del Sol. I turboed it. It just had a uh, log manifold and some other shit. E85 decapped normal truck injectors I put in it back then. And uh, I think I tuned it on like 15 pounds of boost and the thing would rip through third gear. Like it would blow the tires off into third. It had like... Uh, K spore coils and then it got rear-ended and that was pretty much it we sold the car and never really looked at it again after that but uh this is kind of i'm making a little bit of reminiscence from this thing because it's kind of the same thing that we had for her back in the day so maybe we'll make a little single cam monster out of this thing i actually have another z6 at the shop that we could build i could do uh you know, some rods and pistons in, maybe do some head work, cam, uh, put a turbo on it, and make like four or five hundred horsepower and a little Del Sol. Whew, that would be wild. I also failed to mention the guy gave me four snow tires with this car on Steelies. So I have a whole set of snow tires and Steelies uh, that we can use for winter, go rip around on the lake with. Yeah, you guys let me know what we what you think we should do with this thing. Should I just piddle it down the road and, uh, you know, make a couple bucks? Or should we make some content with it? What do you think? I don't know. Uh, if you guys saw the last video, I really do want an S2000. So making some money wouldn't be a bad idea to try to get one of those cars. I think that would be really cool. But at the end of the day, I still love these little Del Sols. They're cool. They're unique. 
you don't see them every day and uh, I think we could make it make it pretty special let me know what you think have a great night and a better tomorrow guys God bless we'll see you later